I'm excited. I'm happy to be here in honor of the NBA All-Star Game. I thought we could have a little dunk contest, and then I'm like, never mind. Well, we'll just do it later at my house. Okay. Listen, um, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to, to bring God's word. This morning, uh, God's presence was, was amazing. It's already here. And God's presence and God's Holy Spirit is doing something amazing in our country already. Many of you guys have heard of the Ashbury Revival, University uh, Ashbury, a Christian school. On Thursday, I was talking to a student from there. Um, it's a youth pastor of a Methodist church on the north side. And we were talking, and he's like, yeah, I go to that school. And, and I'm like, you do? He's like, yeah, I go online. Actually, we just met with the professor. And one of the things that professor was saying is how, you know, it's not famous artists, it's not huge worship bands, it's not, you know, uh, uh, any, anything that maybe you would assemble with big revival, big worship movement, big, a big name preacher, and, and no, it's just young people crying out for God, worshiping, no fancy lights, no fancy, you know, uh, stuff like we have here. LED screens, as people worshiping God, praying, listening to God's word, and are just being hungry for more. And people are coming from all over the state, all over the country to go take a look at that. And now it has spread to four uh, universities that have continuous uh, services. And how many of you wanted to come to Houston? Amen. Yeah. Two, two people. Yes. Yes. We have more people. Listen, I, I, I believe that there's going to be a movement of God, and this, this Wednesday, um, this um, Friday, we were in our, in our small group, in our couple small group, and we were talking about communicating with our kids, and we just talked about the craziness of our world. Can, can, can I just get off subject for a minute in my introduction and just tell you that my wife was listening to a radio program of Crime Stoppers. And the head of Crime Stoppers had, had mentioned that kids are now playing these video games with a lot of people online, right? And so one, one, of the, one of the trending things that's going on in Houston, this is Houston area, okay? The, these people online say, hey, uh, friend, thanks for killing him for me or whatever, you know, you're doing. Uh, send me a picture. I want to see what you're doing. And they send a picture of themselves. And then these people, within seconds... They put that face on videos that have, like, pornographic material. They send it back to the kids and say, hey, if you don't give me money right now, uh, we're going to post this online. We're going to post it to your friends. We're going to, all your school is going to find out. So kids are giving money to, you know, stealing from their parents. One kid had already stolen up to $70,000, had already sent to this person before the parents found out. And uh, other kids committed suicide because they're like, I don't even know how my parents are going to kill me, blah, blah, blah. Everybody's going to find out at school and committed suicide. It's crazy. It's happening in our city. In, in our city, that is one of the biggest problems that nobody's talking about. So we talked about these things that we see. There's, there's just uh, such a need. I mean, you know, you guys heard of the, the story here. There was an abuse of a, of a minor in a, bu in a school bus. And, you know, we, we could go on and on on the list of, of terrible things that happen. And somebody asked me and said, hey, what does the Bible have to say about this? What, what, you know, they, they asked that question to me. And I'm like, hey, the Bible says that in, when we get closer to the end times, evil's going to rise. This is evil. A, a child that's barely even a teenager abusing a six-year-old in a school bus. That's evil. These videos and that, the stuff, all that is evil. So evil's going to rise, I said. But the encouraging part is that the Bible also says that in the last days, there will be a movement of the Holy Spirit, a wave throughout the whole uh, uh, planet that cannot be stopped. It's going to be a revival. It's, I believe it's coming from young people to everybody, and it's going to be amazing. And that is encouraging that even though we see evil, God is going to do some amazing things. And you don't want to miss it. You want to be a part of that. You want to be a part of that. And so this year, we have been talking about how can we be part of, of the vision? What is our vision for our church? What is our vision for us? And 
And all year long, you're going to hear these three words that just come because uh, our, our vision, you, you heard it, is to know God, to, to find your purpose, to make a difference, uh, to find freedom and make a difference, right? But um, this year, our, our mission, let's say for the year, is to connect. So, so we, we find God by connecting vertically, and then we connect with others horizontally and, and, and create. We want God to use your God-given gifts and talents to, to create, create in the, in, the, in the business world, create at home, create at school, cre- just create, okay, with what you have. Don't wait until you get that computer, create with what you have, okay? And then, and then today I want to start on the subject of construct, and, and I, I debated uh, on how deep I wanted to get to, and I just want to give you a tease of constructing, right? And, and Jaime told us last week that, that before we construct, we have a de- de- deconstruct, and, and we're going to get to that. We're, we, some of us have some things that we need to de- deconstruct in our mind that people have put there. We need to de- deconstruct in our hearts. But today, I just want to give you a, a, a taste of, of construction, and I started thinking, what could be the name for this, and uh, I, because I'm going to talk to you about Nehemiah, I said, I'm going to call it Nehemiah Construction LLC. That's the title of my message. But in reality, what I want you to call it is, what I want to call it is Perez Construction LLC, Mesa Construction, Martinez Construction LLC, uh, uh, Hernandez Construction. Oh, that one's already taken. Hernandez Construction Junior. I don't know. But, you know, uh, uh, Medrano Construction, LLC, because I want you to know that you know that God wants to build something through you. God wants to build something in your life, and 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 that construction company needs to make needs to have purpose. That construction company needs to have vision. That construction company, you know, and and so today I want you to think of, of today's message with that in mind starting a construction company. Our, maybe some of us, our construction company is constructing the hearts of our children, constructing our marriage, constructing our, 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 our emotions and, and, and so many things, constructing uh, uh, better habits. Some of, some of us need to construct, you know, our finances, Right? Our finances, your finances may be terrible. You may have debt out of control. You may be dealing with a lot of stuff. And maybe for you, construction uh, is in, in the area of finances. Maybe it's health. Construction, bed is construction, LLC. I got to lose 20 pounds, guys. Last year, my goal in 2022 was that I had to lose 20 pounds, Mike. I ended the year only having 25 to go. Some, some of you guys are a little serious because y'all didn't get it. It's okay. You're going to get it later. But listen, so I, I really got to lose like 25. But um, we, have to, we have to maybe construct better habits physically, right? Get, get better habits when it comes to, to our health. So today, I want to talk to you about constructing. And, and I want you to think about what, your, what you, God wants you to construct and build this year. And also, I want to tell you as a whole, as a church family, what we're going to build this year and what our construction plan is here, okay? So if you don't know the story of Nehemiah, I'm going to tell you real quick, all right? But let me just pray because I haven't even prayed. I'm so excited. I didn't even pray. And I didn't even want to pray now because I know David's going to cut out everything I, I did before the prayer. And he's going to start the video now. David, don't do that. <laughs> I don't know where he's at, but uh, let's just start from the beginning, all right? Is he here? I don't even know. But listen, uh, uh, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the message that you have for us today. However simple, however uh, small, you, you, your Holy Spirit has something for us. Lord, it's something that I may not even say, but the Holy Spirit's already putting in, in our hearts. Lord, let, us, let it be a year that we build and, and we, we build a better foundation in our hearts and our minds that we build a better relationship with you that we be, build better friendships that we build better uh, 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 finances that we build lord just uh, uh, we construct in the areas of need around us lord and as a church that we that we build together in jesus name amen and amen all right let me let me tell you the story of nehemiah so the people of uh, the people of israel uh, the Jews had, had, had been captive, 
And, and then Persia was one of the big uh, kingdoms at the time, right? And so what started happening was, you know, over that last century, people started trickling back into the Holy Land. They, they started trickling back into Jerusalem and, and many other places. They just started kind of moving back. And so one of the guys that, that that's his land, right? That maybe um, it, it's like saying that, that people started moving back to uh, uh, Pasadena or people started moving back to Bayermoso or wherever, right? And then he's like, hey, I'm from there. What's going on there? And, and, and so he, he wanted to ask what was going on in his homeland, right? But he was in a different place and he had a job of a cupbearer. And the cupbearer was the guy that had to taste the wine and had to eat the fruit and had to eat, you know, whatever meal was going to be served to the king before the king, just in case it was poison, then he would die, right? So if he ever had a bad day at work, he would not come home, right? So, uh, you know, just, just think about that. You ever think you have a bad day at work? That, that's a bad day you know, one bad day at work, it eliminates your life, right? So, but, but uh, what was happening was people started moving back, and then we get to Nehemiah chapter 1, and if you have your Bible with, with, with you, I want you to follow along. If not, we're going to put it here in the, you know, we're going to put it here on the stage, and it says, the word of Nehemiah, son of ha Hakaliah, uh, uh, in the months of Kislev in the 20th year, while I was in the citadel of Susa, uh, Hanini, uh, one of my brothers, came from Judah, with some other men, and, and I questioned them about the Jewish remnant that had survived the exile, and also about Jerusalem. So, hey, everybody that kind of survived, where's everybody at? How's everybody doing? Like, I'm over here with the Persian king. Where's, uh, I heard people are going back to your, Jerusalem. So, he's asking, verse 3, they said to me, those who survived the uh, uh, exile are back in the providence are in great trouble and disgrace. Turn to your neighbor and say disgrace. disgrace. Yeah, they're in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates have been burned with fire. When I heard these things, I sat down and wept. Turn to your neighbor and said he wept. Say it real sad like he wept. You ever see a grown man cry? You may have if you come to church long enough because I cry all the time, but it's not pretty when, when you know, grown men cry. Uh, um, so this guy was crying for days. I mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Then I said, Lord, God of, God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keeps his commands, let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer your servant is praying before you day and night for your servant, the people of Israel. I confess the sins with, uh, I confess the sins we Israelites, including myself, myself and my father's family, have committed against you. We have acted very wicked, wickedly towards you. We have not obeyed the command, decrees, and the laws you have. You gave your servant Moses. Remember the institution you gave your servant Moses, saying, "If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations." But you, but if you return to me and obey my commands, then your exiled people are at the farthest horizons. I will gather them up from where, uh, from there, and bring them to the place I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. They are your servants and your people, whom you redeem by your great strength and your mighty hand. Lord, let your ear be attentive to my prayers. Of this, your servant. And the prayer of your servant, who delight in, rev in revering your name, give your servant success today and grant him favor in the presence of this man. I was a cupbearer to the king. So this is a prayer, maybe a prayer on his journal. Maybe he was journaling throughout those nights that he was weeping, that he was crying. And... I just want to tell you a few things I see that, should, that we need to see if we're going to start a construction company. If you're going to start your construction company, you need to see a need. What is the need? Is your kid getting bullied at school? Is the need the young people? Is, is your need single moms? 
Is your need lost uh, uh, siblings or lost relatives that are far from the Lord? Is your need something physical? What, what is your need? I see a need. I, I, Nehemiah, in verse 3, he, he asks, he's like, hey, what's going on? And, and they said, hey, there was great trouble and disgrace. I looked, a little, I looked up a little bit about that word disgrace, and, and in other uh, translations, it just seemed like it was, uh, uh, they had lost hope. They were like the laughing stock of people. They, they were in ruins. They were in disgrace, and, and, and not just physically, but also morally and spiritually, they, they were down, and maybe they felt like, where is God? Where, where are we the people of God? And maybe you look around, and maybe we're here in this station, and, and we're looking at the news, and, and we ask, man, where is God? There's revival in Kentucky, but then there's a, a, a kid getting abused here, and, and all this that's happening, the cyberbullying, and all this stuff that's happening online, and where is God? And if you look around just for a second, you will see there's a need in your school. There's a need in your workplace. There are people that are in need of a hug and, and hope, in need of a God that's powerful and, and mighty, in need of a God that's a healer, in need of the God of peace. If you're going to start a construction company, you need to fulfill a need. Now, what does that need? Everybody is building different things. But you're building. What is it that you're building? Are you even focused on starting a construction company? And, and hopefully after today, we all start with our construction companies because there is a need around us. The, the walls being down in the community represented that they couldn't have safety and if they couldn't have safety, they couldn't have a, a proper commerce and proper business and they couldn't grow and they couldn't uh, be prosperous and they couldn't build schools and they just couldn't be a, a, a good a, a community because of the walls represented so much more than that. How many walls are cracked and how many walls are torn down with the, with, with the friends that you hang out with? with people just around you? What, what are their needs? And I'm hoping the Holy Spirit is just kind of talking to you and giving those, those needs of some people that you know or some things that you know that need needs. Man, if you watch the Grammys, oh my God. Even the devil came out now. Everybody's out of the closet, including the devil dancing around. There's horns everywhere. And, and one of the things that like, really, and I think I talked about this last week, but one of the things that really like um, was upsetting, besides everything that was upsetting, there was a post that has now been taken out of Twitter, and uh, Sam Smith, who was the singer that was kind of, you know, that the, the, the was on stage, and it seemed like they were, you know, worshiping the devil, satanic service almost, it seemed like, and, and he wrote down, like before it started, he said, hey, uh, it's going to be a great it's going to be a great Grammys, we're excited, and we're going to rock it out or something like that. And then CBS, which was the, the chain station that, that had it, in their Twitter, they reposted that and said, hey, you can say that again, we're ready to worship. My question is, they were ready to worship what? They weren't worshiping God, and if you saw the act, you know who they were worshiping. So the whole national TV chain knows who they were worshiping. Got taken down, but I have a copy if you want to see it. I can show you I'm not lying. But listen, it's just, they're just making it public. Their agenda is open, it's public. They, they know what they're doing, and it goes against the values and it goes against biblical principles. There's a need in our culture. There's a need in our people. There, there's just confusion everywhere. There's, like I said, it's just evil everywhere on public and national television and everybody clapping yeah that was awesome giving him a grammy and then we don't pay attention it's just music let's continue to hear it let's continue to download it let's continue to to have it on my spotify that 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 means you're worshiping too i just want to throw it out there you're worshiping too if you're listening to that and So there's a need. I noticed a need. I noticed that Nehemiah took it to God, though. 
Because uh, many of us, we see a need and we want to take it everywhere except to God. So my heart is broken for what I saw in the Grammys. My heart is broken for just what I'm seeing in, in our community. My heart is broken to what I'm, when I hear the news. My heart is broken on what the peop, evil people are doing. And, and, and so we need to take it to God. And I see that he prayed and fasted. You see the need. Can, can we take it to God for a minute? Whatever God is putting in your heart, is it your group of friends? Is it a school? Whatever it may be. Is it your habits? Is it that you need to construct a better life? Whatever it is, can you take it to God? Can we say, God, help me. God, use me. Right? He took it to God. Uh, what do you do with the needs? Well, he took it to God. But what I like about Nehemiah is that he didn't start with the problem. He didn't say, God, did you see Sam Smith? He said, God, you're great. You're an awesome. So he put everything in perspective. He said, God, this is you, and these are the world's problems. You're mighty and awesome. And, and, and many times, we have the wrong perspective. Because if you, if you read the news, if you hear of everything that's going on, I mean, you're going to get scared. The spy balloon, and now there's 45 spy balloons, and now there's, you know, war in Ukraine, and they're stealing money, and Biden's losing his mind, and then everybody's, who's going to be the next president? We're going into recession, and then, you know, there's a coronavirus 45, because it's a 45 variant, and now there's av, uh, 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 the, the av flu, and now the eggs are like $10.00. I mean, I, I'm trying to decide, do I eat eggs for dinner or a steak? Because it's almost the same price, right? Which is hard for me because I like, you know, huevitos, chilaquiles, ahí, unas migas con huevo, tocino, tortillas de harina, frijoles. That's why I can't lose weight. Pray for me. Anyway, um, I, I, get, I, 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 I just get distracted because in this service, I'm a little hungry. But anyway, let me, let me focus, let me focus. He started with how great and awesome is our God. He started with the right perspective. He said, hey, Holy Spirit, you are great. Hey, hey, Lord, you're amazing. Hey, and, and now, that, now that I have the right perspective, there's a problem. Right? There's a problem. There's a, there, there's a problem that, that you can help out because you're great. And God is greater than your economic problem. God is greater than your physical problem. God is greater than your uh, uh, porn problem. God is greater than whatever credit card problem or anything, weight problem that you may have, God is greater. So we take it first to the great God and we have the right perspective. Then he took a moment. Then he took a moment and, and, and he prayed and, and he said, God, you are great and you are awesome, but we're in trouble and, and, and you he reminded God that he is faithful. And sometimes we need, and it's not that we need to remind God. You think God needs to know that he's faithful? He's really reminding himself that God is faithful. And he's saying, God, and you said that if we cry out to you and we repent, you're going to do your thing. And, and so basically he's reminded himself that, hey, I need to repent for my sins and for my people's sins and for everybody's sins. Lord, because you promised that if I do that, you're going to be for us. And some of you may just need to be reminded of God's faithfulness. And maybe you need to, pre you need to preach to yourself. You need to kind of pray, pray to yourself. Because God knows he's faithful. But you need to be reminded that God, you are, you are faithful. You are the king of the universe. And, and you're going to give me that raise. And if it doesn't come one way, it's going to come another way. But you, you control all the money. Maybe the IRS has said, hey, we didn't give you enough money. We're going to give you more. I don't know. However it is, you are my provider. You are my healer. So I see, uh, I see that he had the right perspective, but then I see a moment of opportunity. I see a moment of opportunity, and that's when God opens the door, right? God opens the door, and, and we, we sing, even we don't see it, you're working, right? And then God says, okay, now I'm going to let you see it. Here's the door. It's wide open. God opens the door. Some of us call it opportunity, but here's the situation. Success is when opportunity and preparation meet. And many of us, we have the window of opportunity, but we're not ready. Or many of you uh, uh, are ready and are missing the, the window of opportunity. 
Because it doesn't just, you have to take action. So I see a window of opportunity. I see a Nehemiah that was ready. And then I see success. So I want to take you to chapter 2 of Nehemiah real quick. Verse 2, it says, so the king asked me, because he was all like, I'm sad. You ever had the, you ever looked at your wife and she's like sad? And what's wrong with you, babe? Nothing. You know something's wrong, right? But they say nothing's wrong, so then they want you to read your mind. Good thing Nehemiah was a guy, so then he had to read the mind. He actually just answered what was on his mind, right? If it would have been Nehemiah was a girl, it would have been like three or four chapters before we got the answer. All right, but Nehemiah was a guy. So, so the <laughs> my wife's not here. Okay, uh, so then um, that was just that part was just for her. She missed it. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, hey, babe, how's it going? Amen in the back. I got it. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> what? Verse two. I'm in trouble now. Okay. So then, so then the king asked. It was funny. Okay, we have enjoyed in the house of the Lord. Okay. Why does your face look so sad when you are not ill? You're not sick. Well, why do you look so sad? This, this can't be nothing but sadness of the heart. I was very much afraid, says Nehemiah. I was very much afraid, but I said to the king, may the king live forever. Why should my face not look sad when the city where my ancestors are, are buried lies in ruins and the gates have been destroyed by fire? The king said, Here's a window of opportunity. What is it that you want? All right, that's a problem. Lord, young people. Lord, the kids. Lord, confusion. Lord, my marriage. My family. Then God says, what is it that you want? And the door opens. But you see, Nehemiah took that time in prayer and crying, and he got prepared, and he had a plan. So even though he's telling us that he was afraid, and many times we're afraid, but we need to take that step in action. You're afraid to get the loan. You're afraid to buy the house. You're afraid to start the business. You're afraid to, you know, tell your wife, what if we start again? What if we just go on date nights? You're afraid to tell your kids, hey, I know you're a teenager now, and I haven't been the best dad, but what if we start now? You're afraid that maybe you haven't, uh, maybe you haven't studied uh, uh, four years of theology so you can't possibly teach kids in Sunday school or you can't possibly help the youth. He prayed about it and he was ready. He had a plan. Opportunity, preparation, met, and he said, then I prayed to the God of heaven and said, hey, I'm about to talk to this king. Can you just help a brother out? And he said, if it pleases the king, and if your servant has found favor in your sight, let him send me to that city of Judah where my ancestors are buried so that I can rebuild it. And let me tell you something. There's so much opportunity because there's so much need right now. But he needs Funes construction. He needs Duran's construction. He needs Gonzalez construction. He needs Martinez construction. There is so much need around us, but he needs us to be bold and to take advantage of the opportunity. This is the opportunity when God's going to move like never before, and he's going to use common people like you and me and common people like Nehemiah, and he's like, hey, this is a window of opportunity. I'm going to do great things. Are you going to step in it? Are you going to be part in it? Are you going to stop playing around and and be serious, because I, what is it that you want? Nehemiah was ready. He had a plan. And although he was afraid, he boldly stepped out. He said, God, help me talk to this man. And he did, and God did what only he could do and said, okay, I approved. How long is it going to take you? And, and then he's like, wait, there's more. I also need some letters. If you keep reading, he's like, hey, can you give me some letters, and can you send your guard with you? Like, I want protection too and like Nehemiah had a whole plan and he's like but I'm not done king since you said yes let me tell you more of the plan this Thursday we were um we were getting ready uh, we're, we're 
closing a, a deal, and uh, we were driving to the other side of town, and then they had a meeting at 3 o'clock, but as we were driving to the other side of town, I called these people that are helping us put a youth conference together. And they said, hey, we want to help you put a youth conference, and we want to help you pay for it, and then we're going to invite all the people, all the young people of the city, and it's going to be great, and God's put in our heart that it's got to be in your church, and I said, that's awesome, let's do it, right? And then, I, and then but guess what? Then I said, I have one request, and they said, what is it? I said, my dream has always been for us to have a youth conference at our church, an annual youth conference. And I said, so my request is, we get to pick the name, it's our website, and we get to keep it for years to come. And you know what they said? Okay, we'll help you in years to come too. And I said, yeah. right? And then I'm talking to them, and they're like, what artists do you want to bring? And I throw out these artists that, you know, it's pricey, and people, and then, uh, and then they ask too much, so we offer them less, and then blah, blah, blah. And, and so long story short, I get on the phone call, and he's like, hey, uh, he calls me, and I said, hey, we're meeting today, and he's like, hey, so, I'm, uh, hey, I just want you to know that I'm here to bring whoever you want from church. So basically, they're saying, the conference is in your church, and you get to pick whatever you want. And I said, well, this is what I want, but, you know, it's not working out. And he's like, okay. And then I hung up. Oh, and then he said, well, whatever it is you want, you just tell me. And I said, okay, bye, and we hung up. And my wife was driving next to, next to me, and then the Holy Spirit just kind of talked to me through her, it doesn't happen too often, so she kind of, you know, throws a lot of things out there. But this time it was the Holy Spirit, and, and she said, hey, you don't have any faith. Of course, I turned around and I said, woman, don't talk to me while I'm driving. <laughs> Distracting me. But it hurt, and she's like, hey. She said, hey, God is putting it in your, in your plate. And said, hey, grab it, reach out, like, step out. What is it you want? That was his words. My wife is right there. She, she knows I'm not lying. I called him back like two minutes later with what in Mexico we would say, con la cola entre las patas. And I said, hey, um, here we go. And, the, and I said, hey, man, so um, I really like this guy, and I want to bring him. But he's really pricey. But I'm thinking that if, I'm thinking we could do it. And, he, and you know what he said? He said, Okay, let's talk about it at 3. Just like that. So then when 3 o'clock got there, I was doing everything except talking about that. How my day's going, how the state of the church is going, how everything's doing. And then we finally got to that point, and he said, well, what's it going to take? And I'm like, I don't know. What's it going to take? And then, you know, the people that have been talking to them said, what's going to take this? And I'm just like, mm. And then we're going to have to do this and blah, blah, blah. And then maybe if we invite him to Toyota Center, because there's going to be an event at Toyota Center and blah, blah, blah. And, and long story short, I don't even know what was happening. I just stepped up and said, this is who I want. And then they said, okay, so let's do it. Thursday night, we'll have Un Corazon. We'll have Kim Richards play with your band. And I said, my band's going to love it. I'm like, I might need a new band. They, they might be so starstruck. No, I'm kidding. But listen, I, I, he, he said, uh, Kim Richards can, can sing with your band. And I'm like, done. I'm the piano player. <laughs> and then, and then, and then he, I said, like, my band or the church's band? Because I can, I can start a band. JJ can play bass. And, and, and then he's like, the church's band. I'm like, oh, man. So he said, and then, and then her husband can preach at night. And then the next day we can have the artist that you want. And then we already have a guy that's, that's moving greatly in the youth from New York. Chris Durso, and he's going to come, and he's going to preach in English, and we're going to translate in Spanish. And, and, and all I kept on hearing was God said, okay, we're going to do it, and no matter what the hook is, the artist is the hook. The word of God is what we want. And I was like, the only reason I wanted this guy is not because I want to jump to his songs because I really think they're cool and I can jump at home anyway. I have no shame. I said, but the, really re the real reason I wanted it is because I believe that name can fill this place and I want a place that's filled so that then their hearts get filled. They're going to come here for one reason, but live, but leave with God in their heart. And, and so God did it. I said, okay, we have a graphic. I don't even know if we can put it up or not. But, you know, technically they have, haven't signed until tomorrow. But we, we have a graphic that as soon as we get the green light, it's going to be in every social media that we can put it on, and we're going to put it on our website. And then I said, hey, can I get a special code for my church so they only pay $10 instead of 25 And they said, yeah, we could do that. I'm like, hey, and while I'm asking, right, 
like Nehemiah. It takes you to be a little afraid. It's okay to be afraid. But can you step boldly? Can you move? Can you say God's going to do something and God's going to use you? And can you have faith? We talked about, you know, we are creative beings and we talked about what God wants to do. But listen, God wants to build and he wants to build through you and through me and through our young people and through our couples. And I don't know exactly what he has planned for this year, but I know that Perez Construction LLC, we're going to lock it down in Pearland and I'm going to love my wife like never before, and I'm going to be there with my children, and I'm going to make mistakes, like throwing a ball in my little son's head yesterday because he was getting annoying. But we're going to make mistakes. But we're going to get up, and we're going to be like, hey, we're moving forward in purpose. We're moving forward in, in purpose. We're not knocked down. We get back up, and we're going to build a home that makes a difference and we're going to build a church that makes a difference. So my question to you is the following. What is your construction company building? My construction company is building a fabulous marriage, an amazing family with my kids, encouraging them, pushing them. I'm also building in this church. We're building a better culture. We're building in the youth. We're building with all you guys. We're constructing. What is God calling you to construct? What is your purpose? Now, as for us, here as a one church, God says, hey, we need to pay attention to young people. We need to pay attention to kids. Kids are very vulnerable, but kids also have a lot of faith. You tell, you tell a kid that, you know, the rainbow was created by God, and you tell them the story, and they believe it. And you're still trying to explain the rainbow mathematically through the clouds. They have faith like never before. When my, when my children was, was little, I, I would always get Alessandra to come pray for me because her faith was just, to me, it seemed more pure, more genuine. We need to focus on our children we need to focus on young people. So, I don't know if we have anybody in the media booth. Is anybody back there? There she goes. Thank you, Kim. Everybody say, thank you, Kim. Yeah, the, the team is amazing. Kim does it all. She was just in cameras. She ran to the computer. She's, gonna, she's taking notes so that David knows not to cut it in the prayer. Thank you. <laughs> but listen, this is what we're building this year. And she's going to put it on the screen for you because I want you to see it. The plans were already submitted to the city and approved, but we said the vision is too small. And we need an industrial-sized kitchen. And we need to have space in case we, we, need, we need to bring uh, loads of, of food so that we can give to people. So we need a garage door on the side so that we can bring these you know, forklifts and stuff into the building. We need, to have a, we need to have a refrigerator that's industrial size because you don't know when these guys play basketball, they get thirsty and they want their, their waters cold, right? And I said, we're going to have a gym, but the gym also needs to be like a, a place where the youth can have a service or the kids can have a service. And we need to have like a workout area so that women around our neighborhood and men around our neighborhood can go in there and work out and then later come to church, start receiving God there. And when they play indoor volleyball, rain or shine, now we're going to have two courts inside of there. It can't just be one court. It's got to be two courts because there's like 45 people over here on Thursday night. And I'm like, and then we're going to have some good goals because I like to dunk I, in my mind. I, I, I like to, to dunk. We're going to have a basketball court. And we're going to have a kid's playground that is two floors. And we're going to leave the light on at night so that when people drive by, their kids can say, I want to go to that church. Just like they drive by McDonald's and they see the, the, the toys and stuff and they're like, I want McDonald's. I want them to say, I want to go to that church. And that's our vision because our kids are being influenced with the wrong things at school, with friends. They're being indoctrinated. Our young people have needs. And we have this community center that's for the kids and for the youth. And I put my, hopefully you can see it. This is our vision for our church. You're part of this. This is our vision. This is what we're going to do. 
So this is what I want you to consider. Thank you for the graphic, Kimberly. Now I want you to pray. And I want you to fast for two things. Number one, your own company, your own construction company. I want you to pray, and I want you to fast, and, and, I, want, and, and I want God to ask you, what is it you want me to do? And then you can say, Lord, I want you to get rid of that addiction. I want you to help me have that marriage, that family. I want you to, I, I want you to help me have those relationships. I want, I want a better group of friends, or I want to be a better friend, or I want to be in ministry, or I want to serve you, or whatever it is that you want. Is it the Holy Spirit? Is it speaking in tongues? Is it healing? And the second thing I want you to pray about is our project. This project is specific for kids and families, young people and families, and young families that have young people and kids so that we can reach our community. So I want you to pray and I want you to fast and say, Lord, how can I help contribute to CDLF. And, and, and if it's $50 a week or if it's $100 a month, I want, I want God to put a number in your heart. Well, we're going to go to our website and this week we're going to add a new drop down when you tithe. And, and it's going to say offering, tithe, and building or construction, whatever we, we're going to call it. And then on the weekly or on the bi-weekly or on the monthly, I want you to dream with us. And I want you to say, hey, we're building for the kingdom. We're helping to build for the young people. We're helping to build for our kids. And, I, I, and, and maybe you don't make a lot of money. And maybe it's $5 a week or $15 every two weeks. But in addition to what you're already given to God, in addition to your tithes, in addition to, to, to your offerings, I want you to build with us. Built with us, so when, when we lift it up, you can say, I'm a, I was a part of that. Just like I, I like to say, I was a part of this. Let's build it. Maybe you didn't get to be a part of this one, but we can give to that one. And then when young people are getting transformed and changed, an amazing thing is happening, ahí va nuestro granito de arena in that project. So can you stand up to your feet? I'd like to pray. We're going to talk more and more and more and more about connecting, creating, and constructing. So don't hesitate. We're in the business of building now. We're constructors now. So no matter what, 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 where you, where you, you may be a stay-at-home mom, you're a builder. You may be, you know, a secretary, you're, you're in a construction company. No matter where we are, I want you to take that away. Let me pray for you. Close your eyes. Is, is there somebody here that wants to give their life to Christ? Says, God, the first thing I need to build is my relationship with you. I need to rebuild that. I need to give you my life. I need to know that I know that my name is written in the book of lives. Revelation 3.20 says, I am knocking. Whoever opens the door, I will come inside and I will dine with you. So he's here today, this afternoon, knocking, and he wants to dine with you, and he wants to give you projects and purposes. So if that's you, just lift up your hand. If, if you're like, I need to reconstruct my, 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 my life with Christ, just right where you are, lift up your hand. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else, if you're online, just lift up your hand right where you are if you're not driving, and let us all pray together. CDLF Abilene, let's pray together. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I give you my life. I accept the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, when he died on the cross to pay for my sin. Thank you. I will never be the same. I will follow you. And from this day forward, Jesus will be my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we give him a clap offering?